Okay, we're gonna start out today, start out with something that you do, you have a notion of, you should know something about, and then I'm gonna change it, kind of uh, upset your, your paradigm a little, but then have you discuss what on earth this could possibly be. All right? So first, I'll put up here, um, or square, you have a notion of what that means, right? And by that I mean this number out here. You have a notion of what that means. Not just what it's worth, but what it means. Uh, and I'll write this, and write uh, this. So when I write that in that notation, I write a number, and a little number above it, you know what that means, okay? Uh, you don't have to go over that. You, you should have a notion of that. If you don't, then just talk in your groups about what that means. I forgot you need a refresher. So given that, I want you to figure out what that means. Put your books away. Put your books away. Close your books. Put them below your desk or in the trash. Somewhere that they're not on your desk. You know, at this point. Look up and be given the knowledge. And put it below your desk. Somewhere it's out of your, of your, of your mind, outside of your mind. You don't have one. We don't feel like we have to look things up to know. Stop. Yeah? Oh, yes, sorry. So I want out of you what I was asking before. I want you to discuss it. I want you to talk about it. And I want you to wait around until I come and tell you what it means. You've got powerful brains up there. And I want you to start and think about them differently. Like they're capable of making up new things that must be true. And if you can't figure it out, that's okay. We're going to talk about it more. We're going to investigate it. We're going to be able to know what that means. But I'm going to come around and I'm going to talk to the groups and see if we can be nudged in the direction of creating the knowledge. The new knowledge. Okay. Um, so let's talk about this. What does four to the second mean? Four times four. Four times four. four right? Two factors of four. Um, five factors of three. Six factors of two. Okay, so if we go over here, nine times itself a half a time, or half of a factor of nine. It's kind of a weird to think about, to be able to just like make sense of it that way. Okay? So let's try and use the properties of exponents that we already know and see if we can figure out what this number would have to be. Sometimes in mathematics, actually quite a few times, things are the way they are because they have to be. Because we kind of have like a, a system, a system of exponents. We've got this whole thing worked out where if we raise it to a power, it means that many factors of that thing. If you raise it to a negative power, that just means that it's the reciprocal. Like, we have the system kind of worked out. Now we throw fractions in there, and we have to decide what does that mean? How, what would that mean if all the properties that we already are using need to keep working even for fractions? Okay. So if we do 4 squared times 4 to the third, what's that? 4 to the? To the fifth. Is it to the fifth or to the sixth? Fifth. How can we be sure? Total number of factors that we're multiplying together. Right? That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. You got two factors of four and three factors of four. What are you multiplying them all together? So you just have a string of five fours. So if we want to use exponent notation, we write a fifth power right there. Okay? But three to the fifth times three to the seventh is three to the twelfth. Okay, and 2 to the 6 times 2 to the 2nd is 2 to the 8th, right? We just have that thing. Okay. So we just add the exponents together, right? So this is something, it's a property, it's not a law, it's a property 
that we're noticing, right? It's a, it's a, a pattern we feel comfortable using. If we multiply two things together that have the same base, a base of four, or a base of three, or a base of two, we just add their exponents together, because that's how many factors there are. Okay. Um, so what if we multiply nine to the one half times nine to the one half, what I'm going to do is just write that up. I'm not going to write anything else up there, but I want you to think. If you multiply those together, I'm just talk amongst your groups. Okay? You don't have to shout it out to show off to the little class. What should you get? And then what does that mean that 9 to the 1 half? So just uh, talk about that in your groups. Figure out what 9 to the 1 half times 9 to the 1 half would be, given what you already know about the properties of exponents, and then decide what 9 to the 1 half itself would have to be. All right, so. Um, like I said, a lot of times in math, things are the way they are because they have to be. Okay, let me tell you what I mean by that. When we multiply these together, we can just add their exponents. Add the exponents. When we multiply two things together that have the same base, we can just add their exponents. Okay? So taking that to be a property of exponents that we want to keep being true, okay? We don't, like, the intuition for a one half power is a difficult one. Multiply it by itself a half a time, a half of a factor of nine. This is kind of a weird idea. But what we can do is say, we want to be able to multiply two things together that have the same base and be able to do what with their exponents? Add their exponents. So if we add these exponents, we get nine to the, the first power. Okay. So now what do we have? We have a number times itself. Itself, not even just another number, but a number times identically the same number, right? Yeah. So a number times the same number is nine. So what number does that? Three. 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 For the case of nine? Three. Or, yes, the square root. So it seems like nine to the one half is the same as the square root of nine. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Now we now we, we've got some uh, some intuition. We made a, a guess that nine to the one half is the same as the square root of nine. How about sixteen to the one half? Square root of four. Just four. Just four. Is it the same as the square root of sixteen? Let's investigate. Okay, with the same strategy. Okay, if we multiply sixteen to the one half by sixteen to the one half, what do we get? Why? You add the exponents together, you get 16 to the first. What number multiplies by itself to get 16? Four. Four. Okay. Four. I'm making this look more confusing. Hold on. Uh, right? Four times four also gives you 16. So it looks like 16 to the one half is the same as the square root of 16. Okay. What about x? to the one half. Well, if we multiply x to the one half times x to the one half, what should we get? X to the y. How come? They got the same base of x. We're going to add their exponents. We should get x to the one. And so what's the number that multiplies by itself to give you x? Square root of x, right? That's how we learned about square roots. When I asked you, or I taught you about square roots, so the first person to teach about square roots uh, taught you about them, they were saying, well, what we're, what we're doing, we're for a number that multiplies by itself to give you x, or whatever the number is. So the, the square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half. Okay, let's continue. This, I'll ask you, 8 to the 1 third. Why two? That's true. Two times two times two is eight, right? So why does that mean that this would have to be two? Because eight times one third. Eight to the one eight, third? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Times eight to the, yeah. Times eight to the, yeah. <laughs> And if you add up one third plus one third plus one uh -huh. third, that equals one. Yes, eight to the one. Eight. Yeah. So 
Just very similar to what we had before, we have to have a number times that same number times again, that same number to give you eight. Right. So what number does that? Multiplies by itself three times. Two. Two. Give eight. Two times two times two. Participation This times this times this times this, you know, four times gives you the 256. Because the bottom number four, so you have like four of them to equal out to one. To equal out to a power of one. Okay? So, if we have x to the one over something, what does that mean? Or how could we rewrite it? Maybe it's a little more, maybe a little more sense. We took 8 to the 1 third. We can rewrite it as the third root of the cube root of 8. We could write this as the fourth root of 256. A number to the fourth, some number to the fourth power is 256. It would be, um, you'd write it like how you wrote those, like yeah. n square root x. So the, the nth root of x, the nth root, whatever the n is, that's the root we're talking about. So now, to challenge you a little bit further, I want you to figure out what 32 to the 65th power is. Did you say the answer? Decide the 32 to the 6 fifths is? Can someone come up and show us why? 
Can we have a peer? Can we have a peer to do some more? Please give her your respect. More respect than you can see. That was really sad. I believe in you, Cheyenne. Okay. Are you ready for this? Thank you. What Cheyenne's doing is she's going to create an argument that convinces us that that thing must be successful. So walk us through it. Two to the fifth there. Because two to the fifth is thirty-two. Okay, so you just rewrote thirty-two as two to the fifth. Mm -hmm. And then so you multiply the exponents and you get thirty over five, and thirty over five is six, and two times six equals sixty-four. Wait. Was that last thing you or said? Two to the sixth okay. equals sixty-four. All right. Anybody else who has that's great, fantastic. Yes. Does anybody else have a different approach? Amy? That two to the six fifths is thirty is sixty four. Okay, so our group broke up the fractions, so we got thirty two um, to the five over five. To the five fifths. Yeah, um, and then we did times thirty two to the one fifth. Why is thirty two? Oh, I don't know. That's a it's supposed to be a big two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, and so that is just 32, like, because that's like 1. Um, and then this equals 2. So 32 times 2 is 64. Winner! <laughs> Anybody else? Anything slightly different from that? Any questions about either of those? Okay. So I want you to think about what you have now as opposed to what you would have if I just told you. If I just came up here and rather than, and then asking you questions and having you figure this stuff out, and I just said nine to the one half is the square root of nine, okay, which I have done, all right? And let me, let me tell you that it has made a difference, I can tell already. Because I have said this, I have said that 9 to the 1 half is the same as the square root of 9 to a classroom of faces that has bounced off of all of the faces for the most part. Okay? Just ricocheted off the four heads. Alright? Because going through all of that stuff but not asking them to create this knowledge, alright? I then asked them, what's this? I didn't know. Okay? But with a little bit of uh, of help and, and having you guys actually think about it, discuss it with each other, make guesses, investigate the, whether or not those guesses are correct. Um, I gave this to uh, to your groups and with sometimes no help, sometimes just a little bit of help, uh, all the groups came up with 64. Okay? Um, and that's not been the case uh, in a lot of times that I've taught. Not so many people got it so quickly. So try and, and trust me, just believe me when I tell you that, that talking together, discussing, and getting things wrong, but hopefully eventually getting things right, and, and knowing why these things are the way they are, it's more significant. It sticks in your brain a little better. Um, so. Now, that doesn't mean that, that you'll go home and, and you won't be confused. That doesn't mean that. Okay? 
But it does mean that when you come back and you have questions and you're a little confused, we have a stronger place to start from that I can explain to you. Remember how this is this is, this is, this means that? Oh yeah, yeah, I remember all that, and I can just explain just a little bit. Like this, that gap is really small between what you know and what you're confused about. Okay. Um, so it has made a difference, believe it or not. Um, so um, another way that we can look at 32 to the 6 fifths, which I think is um, maybe a little easier, a little like we can approach it the same way every time, is like this. Well, can we split this up? Like this, take this to the 1 fifth power and then take that to the 6th power? Yeah. Okay. If, we, uh, if we're listening to Cheyenne real closely, we know that we should be able to. Why can we do that? Why, why is this the same as that? <laughs> you write them both out, they'll be the same. Write them both out, they'll be the same? Well, we take 32 times, or 32 to the fifth, uh, then we do that six times. You can say 32 to six fifths. You write out each of those. Okay. So if you multiply this out six times, yeah. and then we use that adding exponents property, we get six fifths as our exponent. Exactly. Okay. Also, if you raise a power to a power, what? You multiply the powers. Right? So Cheyenne was saying earlier, if you raise a power to a power, we multiply the powers together. Okay. If you don't know why that is, you should investigate it. You should, as Carl said, write it out. So. If Use another example, a simpler example, like two to the third, to the fifth. Why is that? Fifteen. Okay, I'll let you think about that if you're not sure. But what does thirty-two to the one-fifth mean now? We're using some knowledge that we created today to understand this. What does thirty-two to the one-fifth mean? It means what? You get 32 if you take some number and multiply by itself five times. Okay. Trying to get 32 by multiplying something by itself five times. That's something we learned today. We just learned that, and now we're, we're applying it. We're using it in a new problem. So yeah, some number that multiplies by itself five times, you get 32, that's two. Two is that number. We're raising that number to the sixth, and it doesn't take long to figure out that two times itself six times it is 64. Okay? Um, So, great, good job uh, all around. Um, now I want to, we have like 10 minutes. I want you to use this time to uh, work on your homework, 6.1. Just want you to think. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. So, <laughs> I want you to listen. Keep in mind that the, the properties of exponents still apply. We multiply two things together that have the same base, we have our exponents. Also, if we multiply two things together, like 5 squared times 10 squared, right? these don't have the same base, right? They don't have the same base. But do they have the same uh, exponents? Right? So this is 5 times 5 times 10 times 10, which is just 5, right, 5 times 10 times 5 times 10, you can write it that way. But that's just 5 times 10 twice. So we could write just 5 times 10 squared. It's like the reverse of, of what you guys call the distribution of exponents. So I want you to look at these problems and have fraction exponents. I just want you to realize that the properties of exponents still need to apply to these fraction exponents work on simplifying these expressions given what you know. If you're able to do it great, but if you're still confused, that's okay. We're going to talk about it next time.